Welcome to the Ministry Pivot Podcast with Russell St. Bernard, a podcast designed to assist leaders as they seize the season of opportunity by pivoting toward it. Let's get started with today's episode. Hey, welcome again to another episode of Ministry Pivot. Uh, Thank you for logging on. Thank you for getting on. Thank you for just clicking in Apple or Spotify or whatever uh, you're listening to, whether it's today or tonight. Uh, super excited that you decided to join me here. Uh, I am super excited about today's uh, interview, today's session, today's uh, pivot uh, with my friend and brother, uh, Pastor Brian uh, Bullock out there in Charlotte uh, at Union Church, uh, Charlotte. Uh, don't forget, uh, before we jump into the talk with him, uh, don't forget to get on the ministry pivot. Don't forget to like, to comment, to share, to subscribe. Don't forget to check out the articles. Uh, don't forget about Pivot uh, University. Uh, super excited about that. Go ahead and register. Uh, for those. And of course, don't forget uh, to help uh, to to talk through and work through what it is uh, that God is doing in your life uh, as far as your pivot, because this is your pivot season. Uh, But again, uh, I'm excited about the conversation on today. Uh, Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, download the show notes. Uh, But let's uh, jump into my conversation now uh, with Pastor Brian. Thanks. Man, Pastor Brian, man, I appreciate uh, you coming back on Ministry Pivot, bro. Uh, I know you are uh, super busy. I know you're doing a billion things, uh, but thanks for getting back on uh, Ministry Pivot with us uh, today, tonight, whenever people are listening. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Hey, man. Uh, you have a um, you've had a major impact, you know, on my life, on my ministry. Uh, I remember being a youth pastor in Boston, and uh, you were like the go-to guy for how to do youth ministry, and you know that's 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 back in the day, man, where. Uh, before anybody ever th- thought of having product, you have books and devotionals and journals and all types of stuff. So uh, to be on this side uh, years later, now that I'm, I'm 40 years old, uh, man, I'm I'm Welcome. I'm just I'm exactly exactly uh, I'm getting to uh, man just be a part of something that I, I I would I was longing to be a part of you know years ago, man. So it's always good when we can connect. Amen. Awesome, man. Well, I, I appreciate you, man. I I, I know um, you were on the second time on, on Pivot, so super uh, appreciate you being here. If you uh, are watching, listening now, you didn't watch the first one, we're not going to go through. Uh, Pastor Brian came on and shared a ton of information with us, a ton of just insight and thoughts as he was launching. Uh, big shout out to Pastor uh, Chandler uh, Union uh, here in the Maryland area, but he's launched a uh, union in, in Charlotte. So a- episode 43 is where we talk through all of that. You can check the show notes out there. Uh, but but man, Pastor uh, Brian, I just want, uh, first of all, thanks again, man, just again for getting on, man. I, I, I said it like three times already because I can only imagine the level of nuts that your calendar looks like. So mine is nuts. Um, and it's and, and I understand it's nuts. It comes with the level of responsibility and gracing that God has given you. And over the past year, man, uh, we talked about uh, starting a new work, doing uh, something in Charlotte, and now it's a year later, uh, and you've got three services. Um, you are running uh, a bigger building. Uh, so, so many things, man, and we can jump into so many parts. We can't get to everything, I'm sure, um, but we talked off camera a little bit, but I do want uh, for you to share kind of what, when you think about this past year, what comes to mind, yo? I know there's a lot, but like what rises to the top? Um, dreams do come true. Uh, nice. this is something that I have been dreaming about since I was a kid. I grew up in a small Baptist church, man. And in my head, I promise you, we would be singing out of the red hymnals. Uh, we'd be, you know, uh, uh, marching to Zion up the middle aisle. And, uh, and I, I promise you now I'd be sitting in service dreaming about a church that I would one day, uh, pastor, uh, yeah. man, when I have a church, I'm going to do this and I have a church, I'm going to do that. And, and I just had this passion in my heart. And uh, to, to now see Union Church Charlotte, it is the church I dreamed of when I was a kid. Uh, it is the church that was in my heart when I was 10, when I was 12, when I was 14. I got ordained as a minister when I was 18. It, this this is the church that I've been dreaming about. And wow. so, man, I am a living testimony that dreams do come true, uh, that God will give you a vision of your future in order to entice you to motivate you and to push you into purpose and he doesn't give you all the details uh but he will absolutely give you the big picture of what's uh, coming tomorrow 
Yeah. And so every day I wake up, I like my church. I like my life. I like my family. Uh, I know many pastors can't stand their church. Uh, and, and it's their church. They, they go there to preach and leave. Uh, they, 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 I'll see y'all next Sunday. Yeah. I wake up on Monday excited. I wake up on Friday is my rest day. I got a hard time with Friday because I'm like, let's get to it. Uh, let's, let's get to set. Let's get to Sunday. Yeah. So, uh, man, I, I'm, I'm, I, I am a picture of dreams absolutely come true. That is awesome. That is awesome. So, so there are uh, several lanes and areas that we can go in, man. Uh, Union Charlotte has been killing it. Um, again, big shout out to uh, uh, Pastor Chandler here, uh, Union. Uh, y'all call it Union Global? Like, is y'all like crazy? <laughs> so I, I love it. I, I will, and I, I'll tell you, big shout out to my pastor, Pastor Matthew Wiley, Kingdom Fellowship. Um, I love it, bro. You're one of the dudes that I text throughout the week. Um, and I'll, I'll text you and say, yo, this is nuts hashtag same team like i love to see y'all killing it so when like when i make comments like that for those who are watching listen like i'm not trying to be funny like you know hey like i really don't care because yeah. i want to see people hear you there the same way they're hearing them here so do y'all do that is, that is it like union global now is that y'all are like i don't have no fingers it's not, it's not enough in one hand. <laughs> so union church is if union church and then union church charlotte uh union church dmv uh, has right now, I believe, five different uh, campuses. Uh, we as we record. A, as, yeah, we, as, as we record. record. Yeah. Yeah. And we are considered a union church location. Uh, so a campus is a streaming uh, uh, church uh, that streams uh, Pastor Stephen from their specific campus. Yeah. Uh, a location, I'm a live preacher. I preach there. Um, but we will also, we'll have multiple campuses here in Union Charlotte where they'll be streaming campuses that will be streaming me from where I am in Charlotte. Um, but man, don't get it twisted, man. I think there's going to be a, a union Houston, a union LA, a union New York, a union Denver. It's, it's, this vision is nice. way bigger uh, than two cities or two regions. I think God has given us something, man, that's going to impact the world. No, that is awesome, man. And I'm, 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 I'm rooting for you. King is rooting for you. My pastor, we, we just had uh, Pastor Keith Battle, who's doing the same thing at Zion. Uh, over there uh, in 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 uh, in Maryland as well. Super excited! We're looking at launching this year another campus. So, man, I just think it's if if people don't get tired of seeing Starbucks and tired of seeing McDonald's, you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, bro, like it, it, it the opportunity is there, man. So I said it intentionally because I knew that that was some of the the what's coming. But let me let me ask you, man, uh, as you uh, launched Union Charlotte this year, um, you were in a space. Uh, you were in. Let's let's talk about the pivots in spaces because you were in one space and that space outgrew, right? Uh, and so let, let let's talk through that a little bit. I want I want to talk about spacing. I want to talk about training and staffing, and then I want to talk about the experience. Okay. So when we launched, uh, we uh, probably I would say six months prior to our launch, mm -hmm. we located a local high school uh, in our city, uh, the University uh, City area of Charlotte. And okay. uh, the school seats about 550. And in my mind, I was thinking, hey, uh, on a good day, if it if we get 500, the room's gonna feel good. Yeah. On a bad day, if we get like 300, 350, uh, and I hate to say bad, let me not say that because somebody somebody's great is 350. But for us, yeah. I was just thinking, if I'm in a room seating 500, if it's full, great. Yeah. If it's half full, we'll still feel all right. And the room won't be. Won't, won't, it won't feel too mm -hmm. small for the room. Yeah. And uh, on our first day, on our launch day, supernaturally, literally, uh, 1,698 people showed up on our first day uh, to a location that only sat 550. So uh, we ended up, obviously, we started with two services. Mm -hmm. Both services are jammed. Yeah. I got overflow upon overflow. I got people sitting on the stairs. Eight weeks after our initial launch, I had to find another high school uh, because the school was threatening to call a fire marshal because we just every Sunday it was just jammed. So wow. we found a uh, school with the auditorium seat 750. Mm -hmm. and so I'm thinking, all right, uh, we're going to be able to add 250 each service. So that's another 500 seats that we're going to be able to add. Eight weeks after uh, we launched, we went to a new school and 2,511 people showed up uh eight weeks prior eight, eight weeks after 
Uh, mind you, there were people who told me, hey, man, nobody's going to, it's too soon to change locations. Uh, yeah. No one's going to follow you 15 minutes down the road. Yeah. No one's going to do that. You're going to lose at least 30% yeah. of the people. Yeah. And we increased in size. Uh, yeah. We end up having to go probably 90 days later. Uh, we, we had to go to three services mm -hmm. um, because, uh, you know, the two services were just getting jam packed. Mm -hmm. So we ended up going to two services in August. And again, attendance increased. Um, and now this past Sunday, as of this recording, uh, which is literally a year after our launch, uh, <laughs> we actually just broke a an attendance record again for us with 3,415 people that we saw Great just God. this past Sunday, first Sunday of our relationship series. And uh, and now I'm dealing with, uh, uh, we can't get them in a the parking lot. Um, the traffic is heading down the road. Um, I got, now I'm dealing with neighbors who yeah. can't get out of their houses because our cars are blocking them. Yeah. Uh, I, they just told me about a Facebook group uh, that's like, hey, how we how how are we going to get this Union Church thing? Out. There's so many people that are coming in here. How are they getting 3,000 people? Uh, there's a church that's down the street from us that's saying their church members can't get into their parking lot because we're dealing with all those different things. <laughs> um, and so when people say they want a harvest, when people say they want revival, when that's people good. say we want to see God move, uh, just know that with every blessing comes a challenge with every yeah. promise comes a problem with every Canaan comes some giants. And uh, so we're facing both at the same time. And so while we're solving problems, we're also celebrating the win uh, because true. we are realizing that there's a spiritual hunger uh, in this city. We're meeting a need. Uh, we're helping transform lives. Yeah. We're helping to change people uh, from uh, people who are far away from church who are now closer to God. So give me the parking issues, give me the traffic. Uh, we're gonna find a way to deal with the neighbors. We're gonna touch the church down the street. We're gonna do everything we can, but we know that God has brought a harvest to our church. No, that is, that, that is awesome, man. And you said, you said so many things, but one thing I wanna hit right really quickly, and you said it, um, is, is, is you, you have uh, healthy tensions, right? My, my team uh, who watching and listening, I got this from Andy Stanley, and I, I use it forever. Andy said a while back that things are tensions to manage, right? Sometimes it's not a problem to solve, it's a tension to manage. Um, and I've used that for years, but my, my, my piece around it is the fact that it's a tension that causes friction. Friction makes you move forward, right? Most times friction, and that's what you have. Um, and I, I wanna, now I wanna dial into one of the friction points, one of the situations that you talked about, because you said it really quickly and I appreciate you, uh, cause I know you're trying to, you got a lot going, but I'll, I'll, people who are watching and listening, please get the show notes, please pat, uh, follow, uh, Pastor Brian, follow Union Charlotte. But he said uh, that when they first started, they had a vision, a goal for three, a hundred or so people because you wanted to kind of set expectations that people told you, why are you trying to go that big, right? But I, I want you to talk for a minute. And I heard you say it again. Then you you did the five, then you did the eight, then you did the 16. Now you're at 3,000. God is going to bless even more. And, I, and we believe it because there are so many people, like nobody gets upset when like the 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 the, the Super Bowl has over capacity. Like nobody gets mad at that. Nobody gets mad when the 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 artist, the rock star comes in town and you can't like it's like, but when the church does it, it's like, yo, what do you do? I'm like, bro, it's the same situation. Like these are the same people. Like let us, but let me this is that that's my soapbox. I'm sorry. But the capacity and uh expectation, yo, how did you share with your team when y'all just started that you saw something that was bigger than you just started? Because that's what I hear running through all of it, the capacity. And then people push back on you, but you push back on that. I'll, I'll stop. Yeah. When people ask me what grows our church, when it's grown our church, one of the things that has grown our church is what we call having a mission worth sacrificing for. Nice. And most, most of the times, a lot of the uh, churches that I've been involved with or churches that I see uh, they are they are doing great work, but I'm not sure if every work is connected to a mission we're sacrificing for. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been unapologetic about our desire to see lost people come to God and to see unchurched people come back to church. We have been unapologetic 
about wanting to see every person united with purpose, that you will have a better life and a more fulfilling life when you find finally find out why God put you here. And so for us, we connect everything to that. Uh, if you are not, I tell my parking team, you are not out here parking cars. You are out here uniting people with purpose. You are out here helping lost people find God. You are not out here just greeting. You are in this lobby to help a person who guard is up when they come to church. You're going to help their guard come down so that they can receive the gospel when they get inside that auditorium. You are not out here just setting up, taking down equipment. No, every, every piece of equipment that you set up is connected to a person who's going to discover their purpose, who's going to finally realize that life makes sense because I know why God put me here. And when and that is the vision that we gave to every person who joined our team. And so for us, if it's a mission worth sacrificing for, yeah, then I don't want it to be small. <laughs> I don't want it to be little. I, I want as many people to discover purpose as possible. I want as many people, man, are you kidding me? You know how many lost people I have in my family? You know how many uh, cousins and aunts that may be going to hell as a result of not having a life-giving church that they can be a part of? No, 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 no. I want to be a part of this. What people don't want to sacrifice for is building my website. What they don't want to sacrifice for is so I can get more followers on Instagram. What they don't want to sacrifice for is so that we can just have a big church. I've never said to our church, y'all, we're going to have a, y'all going to have a big old church? No, I've said, do you want to make a big impact and do you want to help us build big lives? If we can make a big impact and build big lives, then your life, you are going to, you are going to find more enjoyment and fulfillment out of a life that's making a difference and making a difference in other people than you ever will be on vacation or having a bunch of money in the bank or having all these girlfriends. No, no, no. The best thing you can do with your time and your gift is to say every weekend, I am getting more people out of hell and I'm getting more people into heaven. This is one thing I tell people with my team. I said, I can't wait till we get to heaven and we get to meet all the people that are there because of us. I want us all just to go ahead and get together with every person that said, I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for you uh, standing outside, setting up a flag, uh, uh, waving some type of sign. Um, So you have to ask yourself, how big is the mission? If the mission is small, we're not sacrificing for it, and we don't care if it's 300 or 1,000. But we have a church that's like 3,000 is not enough, (laughs) 5,000 is not enough. Yeah, And the tension that we feel is because there's a mission that's burning in our hearts that yeah. we have to fulfill. No, that, 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 that's great. I, I, want, I want you to, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit mission, but I'm listening and I want for the pastor, for the leader, um, for the, 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 the ministry leader that's not in exec leadership team, I, they, they are hearing it, right? But I want to, and they didn't do it, even though I asked them to go back to episode 43. They didn't go back. They just kept press, press praying and listen all the way through. Can you help us? Uh, two things. One, um, what was the size of your launch team? Because I think pe- pe- people don't remember that, right? And but two, how do you go about? Because I appreciate what you said. I appreciate the mission of it. I appreciate knowing that people have to be on mission for something bigger than them. But if I'm a pastor, if I'm a leader, one, I want them to hear the size of your launch team. But two, I want them to hear how Pastor Brian and the family went around sharing this mission, because because you talking to the parking lot, you talking to the green team, people skip over that all the time. I think they don't they don't understand the, the level of importance that that, that is. But I, I want them to hear from you. How do you how did you make that a rhythm um, after we hear about how big the launch team was, please? Well, our launch team, I moved to Charlotte uh, in July of 2022. We launched our church in January of 2023. Uh, yeah. That means for six months, we were building a launch team. Uh, I didn't have any connections when I came to Charlotte. I didn't have nobody who knew me. Uh, Union Church, my, my pastor, he didn't send me. My pastor sent me uh, with, 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 with a word. He sent me with, with some vision. Uh, he sent me with some strategy. He did not send yeah. me with any people. Uh, yeah. Me and my wife and my two kids came here on our own. We had nobody on our launch team. Uh, we grew our launch team. Uh, to a little over 200 people before yeah. our launch. Um, and the way we did that was simple. I would I, I came into the city and uh, I would get on Instagram and I'd say, hey, y'all, 
uh, we just rented this coffee shop uh, Friday night. And uh, man, if you love coffee and you are a person in the city and you want to be a part of something that's bigger than yourself and you want to do something that's significant, uh, maybe you're living life right now, but life seems to have no purpose. Things seem to be feel a little bit empty. This Friday night, I want you to come. Just get some coffee, hang out with a good group of people, and let's build community together. I'll see y'all this Friday. I can't wait. And we get there on Friday, and there'd be 100 people that would be sitting at that coffee shop uh, waiting for us <laughs> to get there. And uh, we gave the coffee shop, I don't know, 400, 500 bucks to have it yeah. for about two hours. We get in that coffee shop. We do some icebreakers. Uh, we would just kind of hang out. And then at one point, uh, no praying, no prophesying, no laying hands, no, no, no spitting oil. Uh, these are people who are just coming in just to connect and build yeah, community. Yeah, yeah, I grab yeah. a microphone with my wife holding my hand, and I said, "Hey, I was I was raised by a single mom, absent dad. Uh, my dad was struggling with drug, drug addiction, and uh, my mom raised us on her own, and uh, grew up in a neighborhood where there was drugs, alcohol, violence, addiction, anything you can imagine." Yeah. But the one thing that my mom did was she took us to church every single Sunday. And at church, my life got radically changed. I fell in love with God and the life I could have went, the road I could have went down, I did not because I fell in love with Jesus at a young age. And now I'm sitting here with my wife and here's what we want. We want you to experience the life transformation that we got to experience. Yeah. We want to build a church that's going to have a vision where people like me who walk into a church door running away from problems at home, get to hear about a God who cares about their life. If you wanna be a part of this church, if you wanna yeah. be a part of this team to help other people that was just like me come out of that situation, I want yeah. you to grab that card that's on the table. I want you to fill it out. And I wanna make sure that we connect with you. Hey, hey do me a favor. Even if, you, even if you just came for the food, you just wanted some coffee, fill it out anyway. I'm not, we'll call you just to say thank you for coming. And then 80 people will fill out that card. And then we call those 80 people. Out of those 80 people, 40 of them would join the team. And we start building every week just like that. And uh, because here's the deal. What I notice when a lot of people start churches, first thing they want to do is they start a prayer meeting or a Bible class. And, uh, and I get it. You, you, you feel like, really, I, I got to start teaching. But what I'm really doing is I'm trying to find people who want to build something. Everybody yeah. wants to be fed. I'm looking for yeah. people who have a passion and a conviction to want to be a part of building something that helps other people's lives. Yeah. I told our launch team, if you help me build this church, I'm going to preach you every week for the rest of your life. You ain't got nothing to worry about. We're going to preach all the time. You're going you're <laughs> to get more Bible than you can handle. But if you just let me get vision and let me teach you our culture, let me show you how we do what we do, then yeah. I promise we're going to launch real big. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that that that's phenomenal. And again, I need y'all to go back to the other episode, forty three. It's in the show. That's when I say that no more because you actually said I remember it. And, and when you said that line, man, I love you so much, bro. I remember the line because he was like, "Yo, they want me to preach, but like I'm telling them, I'm a preach when we start. Like right now, you got to get this culture. And like that is a because so often, um, you know. And again, big shout out to my past pastor Watley and other senior pastor again, a uh, uh, pastor uh, 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 Stephen. There are so many leaders who I think launch because they have a a, a, a a yearning to teach, but you've got to teach the right thing first. Like the Bible, God has given you that. Like you're going to be able to get that, but you slow walked it and allowed people to understand the vision first. And I think that was super uh, phenomenal, man, and super dope and has helped your momentum go forward. But now you, you, you talked about the team. I do want you to share because one of the things I have to share with you off camera that I feel like a lot of leaders need, need to kind of hear, and I, I even want to hear as we're doing some stuff here, because God has blessed you in a tremendous way with this, is how are you developing your leaders, man? How are you pulling leaders in? How are you uh, uh, pruning leaders out? Because I, I could imagine uh, you've been doing it for a year. You're getting, God, God, is, God is blessing. I'm, I'm pretty confident that you've got some people come in there uh, who think that they're the bishop already, um, who think that they're the prophet already. Uh, so I'm sure you've had to wean some folk out, but, 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 but help us, those who are watching, those who are listening, help us understand your, your, your process, your ethos on leadership, um, and developing the right people in the right spaces so that you eventually, uh, can also move in the spaces that God has given you. I'm going to stop. Yeah. 
Man, um, I would say that leadership development is probably one of the most underutilized uh, concepts within church development. Mm -hmm. uh, we are used to gift acquisition. <laughs> so just give that. me a, that. gift acquisition is I found somebody who can sing, who can preach, who's talented, and I just throw their gift in a space. And if I throw their gift in a space, then it's going to build it on its own because I, I found the most gifted person I could find. Gift acquisition is not the same as leadership development. Leadership development is someone uh, that I was able to uh, find and give them our what we call our systems and our culture. And uh, when we say culture at Union Church, what we say is knowing what we do, knowing why we do it, and being excited about <laughs> why we do it. And so I meet a lot of people. So for instance, uh, let's say uh, our services are, are hour and 15 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do that because we just believe that unchurched people to make an unchurched person stand for three hours the first time they walk through your door and while everybody catches the Holy Ghost and they sit and watch us out is a bit unfair and unreasonable. But that's a whole other topic. Yeah. Uh, so our, our service is an hour and 15. Yeah. So I'll get a person who come in and they say, now, how long is the service? Hour 15. Okay. Now, they just found out what we do. But now I got to ask them, do you know why we do it? And if they don't know why we do it, they're going to get frustrated that we're not like their old church. Mm -hmm. They're going to get frustrated and call us unspiritual because their last church they came from, they, they had four-hour services. Now we do an hour 15. So now I got to get you to know why we do it. But now that you know why we do it, question is are you excited about the fact that we that do is it great. if that you is can't great. get excited about see some people okay i know we do our 15 i don't know why we do it but i just still feel like i mean we're, we're quenching god's spirit okay so you can't be a part of our culture no matter how much bible this is why the bible study thing I, is no matter how much bible <laughs> you know if you don't like our culture yeah. your bible knowledge is not going to help you be a leader here your yeah. bible knowledge no matter, and again, we know that we know character plays a role. We know spiritual yeah. maturity and all that. But I have just found some of the most Bible knowing people uh, have an unhealthy attachment to a method that they grew up in that they want to bring to your church. Now, mind you, they left that <laughs> to come here. Yeah, they're with you now. <laughs> they're with you, but they want to, but they want to turn you into what they left. And it's like, no, you don't want to do that. So what you're looking for are people who will love the culture. Who will yeah. understand the culture? Uh, we put a lot of emphasis on leadership development. Uh, I'll, I'll give you this because I, I can say more than uh, the amount of time that we have. Yeah. Uh, we put everyone on something called the pastoral wheel. The okay. pastoral wheel. This was actually created by Pastor Stephen. Pastor Stephen Taylor, my pastor. Yeah. The pastoral wheel is that every person on our team should be getting pastored or developed. Uh, and we, 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 at our church, I'm the lead pastor. Under me, there are team directors. Under those people are team coordinators. And those people are team leads and then team members. I can't break down each one, but here's what you should know. I pastor my directors. My directors are pastoring their coordinators. My coordinators are pastoring their team leads. My team leads are pastoring their team members. So right now we have over 500 volunteers. Pastor, how, how do you how do you build 500 volunteers? How do you pastor all those people? I only pastor my 10 directors. My 10 directors pastor their coordinators. Coordinators pastor their team leads. Team leads pastor team members. That's we good. put people on something called a pastoral wheel. I'll give you a little bit of pastoral wheel. Uh, number one is build a relationship. If you're going to develop a leader, it starts with actually knowing who they are. Know their life. Know their child's name. Go to graduation. Get them to your house, so do good. coffee, like actually build a relationship. Then number two, we say paint the picture. Paint the picture is, hey, here's where I see you. Here's what I see in you. Here's what I believe that you're going. Man, yeah. I, you're casting a vision for their future based yeah. on who you know them to be and what you know that God put on the inside of them. Three, we say identify the it. What is the it? I'm identifying 
the thing that's preventing you from getting to the picture that I just painted. I just painted a great picture, but you lie a lot. I just painted a great <laughs> picture, but you always late. I just painted the picture, but I think you smoke weed. So here's what we're going to do. I need permission to identify the it's in your life. That's what Good. Pastor Stephen is my pastor because he identifies the it's in my life. He can okay. call them out and he can help me walk through them. And then number four, we say, hey, shape their life. This is me now being mentor, mentorship, coaching, discipleship. Now that I identify that lying is your problem, I get to hold you accountable and help shape you, uh, financial stuff, all those different things. And then after we shape their life, we say, let's push them. Okay. Let's push them further than they thought they could go. And then after we push them, then we repeat that process over and over again. And so uh, whatever your method is that you choose, just grab one and use that to develop leaders. Yeah, I, I think that's I think I think that's phenomenal. Again, y'all got to look at the show notes. Uh, but I, I'm going to say what, what you also said, uh, Pastor Brian, is you said that as the senior leader, you've got to be willing to uh, 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 release. Because all I heard you say was a lot. And, and I think for a lot of leaders, unfortunately, the reason why they can't have a level of 500, 250 leaders is because they want to be the one that everybody comes because they they get that. But the truth is that the less you do, the more you can do. And you just gave us a, a ridiculous outline of what that looks like. So again, I, I, so I, our time is getting close. I, I, want, I want to ask you, uh, I asked you about uh, experience. Well, I actually, I, the experience is the last part. So I asked you about the, 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 the launch and I asked you about the leadership, but the, the experience on Sunday morning. So I want, I want to make this twofold. How what what are you going for on Sunday morning for people to feel? Because you're, you're obviously aiming at something uh, and, and God has been kind. What are you what are you going for for people to feel? Again, for the pastor, for the leader who's listening, they, they're not going to be able to do what you do because they're not you. But I do want them to hear the aim that you precisely go after every week. Um, and then my last question for us before I, I, I do, I do want to ask about your family. Because you started with it, because that that was the launch team. It was four y'all, maybe five. Your stepmom was with y'all. Stepmom was with my mother in law. Mother, mother in law. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, 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 there's four of y'all. But, but let's just go to the aim. What are you aiming for on Sunday morning? How can pastors and leaders aim more precisely? But what are you aiming for? On a Sunday morning, uh, we have four aspects of our Sunday morning. Number one, we want celebration. Sunday morning should feel like a party. Everybody should be partnered. We do a big huddle before our service because I never leave to chance that people are coming in full and ready to go. No, uh, we're going to hype you up. We're going to get you ready. Sunday morning should never feel dead. We want it to feel like a party from the time you pull in that parking lot to the time you leave. Okay. Two, we say it should involve some inspiration because nothing is more memorable than the presence of God. Nothing mm -hmm. leaves an impact on me than the fact that I walked into this service. I felt the presence of the Lord in this room. Tears came down my eyes. Y'all were singing. Tears came down my eye when we were praying, and uh, that leaves an impression that lasts forever. And then we say preparation. Every single sermon I preach or every single sermon that is preached on a Sunday is to prepare you for Monday. If what I'm saying don't give you a step that you can take tomorrow, as soon as you leave here, then I just gave you a deep message for no reason. Uh, I, gave you a, I gave you something that you can't use. Uh, we don't mm. preach over people's head. I preach something that you can actually put into a next step tomorrow. And then every single Sunday, we do a call to salvation. Salvation is what a Sunday morning is all about. Parking team, the greeters, hosts, events team, all the stuff that we're doing. It is to get to the end of that sermon where I can say, if you want to pray the prayer of salvation, pray this prayer with me. And we get people to pray and we see we have seen over 1,500 people give their life to Christ as a result of this church. Great and God. I'm sorry. I, this is just me. I'm not apologizing for it. I'm not backing off from it. If you can go Sunday to Sunday and Sunday and never care about a lost person finding God, mm -hmm. I'm just not sure if you are accomplishing the mission or the great commission that the Lord gave us to go and make more disciples of all nations. Uh, if Jesus says, I leave the 99 to go after the one who's lost, 
I just don't understand how you can do a church for 99 and let the one stay lost every single week. And so for us, we have made the one a priority every single Sunday. And I think it's blessed our church. That's good. It has. And I think, and I think again, what I I hear you saying is um, the aim is, is focused on people seeing God, right? At the end of the day, that's, that's the aim, but it's going to be uncomfortable, right? It's going to change some of the stuff that you have to do. Cause I heard you say it in early and I'm, again, I'm pulling it out because sometimes uh, we listen and we just want the one, two, three notes and yet you're giving them, but I, I really want people to be able to peel back and understand there's a level of change that have to, has to happen if you're going to be able to hit the core of, and, and you said this earlier and I missed it, but I want to catch it back now because you said it again, that uh, you expect people to come, you show up, uh, early to pray and, and lead your leaders to hype them because you don't know what's been going on with them. You, 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 you've already empowered your leaders to empower the leaders who are under them. But what you also made, the, and I want to say this, is you are really making the, bo- the most of the time and opportunity that you've been given. Because sometimes I think people look at it, you said it with the launch team, you, you went to a coffee house, right? You had nobody there, coffee house. I'm, I'm assuming you went in the afternoon, later time, you getting out earlier with the team. There's no difference between uh, uh, what God is going to do in your life and what God is going to do in somebody else who's putting in the time. You've put in the time and the effort. You've put in the time and the effort to do what other people just haven't been able to do. And I think that is super uh, phenomenal. Man, I, I, I want to I ask you this last question um, is what is next? What do you feel uh, is next? Obviously, you're excited about what's going on now, but what do you feel? Because if I, if I know you, I heard it before and I still hear uh, fire and passion in your voice now. So uh, this ain't that. So th- th- this is better than what it was. So I appreciate that. I see it in your face. He's smiling now, but this is not it. Like I, I, I know that, there, that there's more. So what, what is next uh, for Pastor Brian? What is next for Union Charlotte? What is next uh, just in, in, in ministry, what, 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 what are you feeling is, is next? Praying. Is um, next. I, I am enjoying not fully knowing I'm enjoying the adventure and I'm enjoying having the vision without all the details. Obviously mm-hmm. I see us in a permanent building. I see mm-hmm. us with multiple campuses. Mm-hmm. Um, I see us, you know, hiring, uh, some more staff. Um, I will say this right now. I am totally enjoying obsessing over this church. Every single day we obsess about our people, our systems, our culture. Uh, I think in my future, there's a podcast in my future. There are books In my future. There's more speaking engagements in my future. Uh, there's a ministry. My wife and I will launch. in my future. There are many things that the Lord is going to lead me to, but I am so loving getting to obsess over every aspect of this church. Are our leaders in the right seat? Uh, is our culture the way it needs to be? Are our systems working? And I'm giving my life to that, believing that God's going to open the door for other things uh, as 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 uh, as they come. That is great. That is great, man. Well, I, I appreciate uh, your time, man. Um, I, I want to ask you to do one thing in, in 60 seconds, maybe 60 seconds. Um, past the leader watching, inspired, um, frustrated, maybe um, one thing that you want them to know because you started with with four people right and now you're moving and god has blessed you at the recording of this and i appreciate you doing that because you know god is gonna blow it out now that you named it um at the at the, this recording uh you saw your highest um the pastor that's trying to get there trying to figure it out what's what's one thing you would share with them um him her as they listen um to be able to just encourage them in that season well, number one, I would say always embrace the season that you're in. Uh, don't skip steps. Uh, God has you in this season for a reason. And you don't have to always take the elevator or try to take the elevator out of something. Uh, I would say absolutely take the stairs because the stairs are where God will meet you. But I will say this, man, and this is just a pet peeve of mine. This is something mm-hmm. that's really bothered me. Um, we got to get out of this idea that... I can't get any mentorship or help from anyone else. I'm just going to come up with the new way to do this. Hear me. Uh, it's what you're trying to do has more than likely been researched. It's been tried. Yeah. It's, it's been tested. And 
you have to seek out people who are winning in an area that you're struggling in and ask them for guidance and help. And then be willing to put your Isaac on an altar and be willing to, to literally kill it so that God can show you the ram that is in the bush. And there are too many pastors who don't want to put their Isaacs on altar, even though it's not working, the name don't work, the strategy don't work, plan don't work. And they'd rather five years of doing the same thing with no results than to just say, hey, God, can you show me a, a mentor in the bush, a church in the bush? Uh, we got to stop saying stuff like, yeah, that works over in, that works in Cali, but it don't work in Texas. That works in, in Birmingham, but it don't work in, I don't know. I don't know if I believe all that. Yeah, I, yeah it, find what, it works somewhere. Somebody's working it. Good. Yeah. And so we got to get to a space where you stop being so territorial um, about the way you do it and learn from someone who's doing it and say, I, I'm blessed because I ask a lot of questions. I have a lot of mentoring. I received a lot of coaching and I shut my mouth and just did what they said would work. And I did it and it was working. And that's all to it. That's good. That's good. Well, man, again, uh, bless you, bro. Appreciate you getting on uh, today uh, with Ministry Pivot, man. Super excited about what God is doing in your life. I see all of the things. I'm actually going to text you something in a minute. Uh, I don't want to say it on camera. Uh, but I, I see I see all of the things, man, that you're talking about, man, and even more, man. I'm super excited for you. Blessed on the family, blessed on the wife and the kids, man. Super excited uh, for what God is doing there at Union Charlotte, man. And I can't wait. Uh, uh, this year, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it out there. I'm going to make it out there just, just because uh, I, I, I want to I I be in the room. Uh, but I, I, I am super excited for you, man, and looking forward uh, to what God is going to do in your life, man, as you continue to make all of the pivots and even more uh, things that God has for you, man. Thanks for getting on, Pastor Brian. Appreciate you. Man, I appreciate you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I hope that you were uh, as inspired and as excited uh, about all that God is doing in the life of Union Charlotte, all that God is doing in the life of Pastor Brian and the family there. Uh, super excited to hear about the thousands of people who are impacted. Super excited to hear about the hundreds of leaders who are serving with him and all that he has. Don't forget to go to the show notes. And again, don't forget uh, to go on the Ministry Pivot uh, to like, comment, share, uh, subscribe, to read uh, the articles. Big shout out to my, my ministry partners. And you can see uh, who they are there. Big shout out uh, to all of those who signed up already uh, for the Pivot uh, University and looking forward uh, to seeing how I can enjoy, how, how I can uh, join you and help you toward your pivot uh, with the strengths coach and based uh, understanding of who you are as a leader, of who you are as a person, of who you are in the way uh, that God has uniquely shaped and formed you. So go ahead on uh, to Ministry Pivot and Pivot University to hear more about that. I look forward to seeing you uh, the next time we get together. I've got a great series coming up on succession. Uh, so don't uh, you don't want to miss that. Uh, you don't want to miss uh, all that God is doing. You don't want to miss uh, how uh, you can gleam and learn from pastors and leaders who are uh, 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 coming in place of leadership of senior leaders. And so uh, excited about that. And don't forget that this is your season of opportunity. All you have to do is pivot toward it. God bless. That's it for today's episode of The Ministry Pivot. We hope you enjoyed listening and gaining some valuable insight. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform so you never miss out on our future episodes. And if today's show has resonated with you, please leave us a review to help others discover our podcast. For more resources and updates, visit our website at ministrypivot.com. And be sure to join our email list as well as follow us on Instagram at Ministry Pivot. Thanks for joining us today. And we're excited to have you back next time for another insightful episode of Ministry Pivot. Stay connected. Keep pivoting. We'll see you soon.